Welcome to your Physics 12 screencast on electrostatics. This is the second in the series on electrostatic induction. Uh, first, to begin with some background knowledge from our last session, and that was that opposite charges will attract each other and like charges will repel each other. In other words, a positive and a negative charge will attract, two positives would repel, or two negatives would repel. Given that, it might seem a bit contradictory to begin with that our exploration will be on how neutral objects are affected by charged objects. Well, let's take a look at an example here. We'll begin with a neutral balloon and a neutral wall, and we'll bring the two objects up next to each other. And no surprise, when we place the balloon against the wall, there is no interaction. But if we take the balloon, rub it against our sweater, put some charge on it, now bring it up against the wall, there's clearly an attractive force holding the balloon against the wall. So let's examine this in more detail and see what must be going on to cause this effect. So the balloon originally was neutral. So if I assign arbitrarily, say, five positive charges on the balloon, then the neutral balloon would have originally had five negatives as well. The wall, also neutral, would have the same number of positives as, as negatives on itself. And just to make it clear, I've put black circles around the negatives that are on the wall. The balloon, remember, was charged. That means there were many excess negative charges placed on the surface of the balloon. The balloon's an insulator, so those negative charges could not move once they were placed there. But they would have a repulsive effect on the negative charges in the wall. And although they couldn't move very much, they would move further away from the balloon. So the diagram not to scale, but it does illustrate the idea. That repulsive force from the negative charges on the balloon would continue to hold the negative charges in the wall at bay, leaving the wall near the balloon with a positive charge. Remember, the wall is still neutral overall, however. The balloon is the only charged object. That means there would be an attractive force between the negative charges, the excess negative charges on the balloon, and the induced positive charge on the wall. The word induce means to make happen or to make happen indirectly. So this attractive force would be an induced attractive force between the negative balloon and the closest region of the wall to the balloon where there is an induced positive charge. So in summary, a charged object will induce a charge in a neutral object. In this example, the negatively charged balloon induced a positive charge on the regions of the wall that were closest to the balloon, and it made that region of the wall positive. So the charged object, the balloon in this case, is then attracted to the neutral object, the wall. This is because the wall now has an induced charge. Let's look at another example of this, um, a little more enlightening. Again, we're taking a charged object, in this case a small amber rod, and that electrostatic force is enough to move this really large, heavy piece of wood. And if we zoom in on this, we can actually just pause and study this interaction that's happening right here. So remember, the piece of wood, originally neutral, so the piece of wood would have some positive charges on it. So I'm just going to arbitrarily assign four positive charges to the piece of wood and the amber rod would also have positives on it. Let me arbitrarily just assign two on the amber rod. The piece of wood would have had originally four negative charges on it. The amber rod would have had many more negative charges on it because it had been charged for this experiment. That means the two negatives on the piece of wood that would have originally been on the left-hand side would have been repelled by this excess negative charge from the amber rod, and the negatives would have shifted to the right-hand side. Again, I'm exaggerating it here in the diagram, but it illustrates the idea. That means that the positive charges on the left-hand side of the piece of wood are closer to the negative amber rod than the negative charges are. So there's going to be an attractive force between the positives and the negatives here, the positives in the wood to the negatives in the amber rod. There would also be a repulsive force, mind you, between the negatives on the right-hand side of the piece of wood and the negatives from the amber rod, but they're farther away. So that repulsive force is going to be a much smaller size force than 
the attractive force on the left hand side. So that's why even though the wood is neutral, the net effect is that it is attracted to the charged object. So let's let the video finish. Again, something to appreciate is these electrostatic forces are very, very large, even from that weak interaction of just rubbing that piece of amber against a wool sweater. So in summary, when we're dealing with induction, there are actually two electrostatic forces involved, an attraction to the closer induced charge on the piece of wood that was the positive side, and a repulsion by the further away, if you will, induced charge. That would be the negative side of the piece of wood. The electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the distance between the charges. If the distance gets bigger, that means the force gets weaker. This is why the attractive force, due to the opposite sign induced charge, if you will, is larger than the repulsive force due to the same sign induced charge. That may sound a little bit complex when you see that, but if you back up the video, just link that last statement to what you saw with a piece of wood, it may become more clear. Our next illustration, um, a little bit more uh, advanced, is the effect that electrostatic induction could have on polar molecules. So just very quickly, what do I mean by a polar molecule? That's some sort of molecule that has, I don't know, some arbitrary shape and one side of the molecule, because of its orientation, has a positive side, and the other side of the molecule has a negative side. A good example of this would be a molecule of H2O. The hydrogen, you might recall, from chemistry class, has a positive side, and the oxygen has a negative side. So that illustration, let's take a look at what can happen with electrostatics and water. We have a charred, pla charged plastic rod. In this case, we're bringing up next to the flowing water in the sink. Take a look closely what happens between the water and the amber rod. Quite severe, quite significant. And just like with the balloon and like with a piece of wood, there is an attractive force between a charged object and the obviously neutral water. So let's examine this a little bit more closely and then zoom in on this piece to try to understand what's happening. Now remember, we're dealing with water molecules here. And so if we look at that more carefully from our chemistry background, the oxygen has a negative charge and the hydrogen atoms have a positive charge. So this is a polar molecule. One side is positive, one side is negative. The charged rod, again, is negative. It was rubbed against a piece of wool, so it has excess negative charge. So as the water molecules are flowing down from the tap, the water molecules working their way down towards the sink, they go near the plastic charged rod. So the positive components of the polar molecule, the hydrogen, would be pulled towards the negatively charged rod, and the oxygen would be repelled. The effect that this has on the water molecule is to make it rotate. So the positive side of the water molecule will end up being closer to the charged uh, rod rather than the negative side. The net effect is a force to the right, just like we had with a piece of wood. That happens for every water molecule, or the majority of the water molecules at least, as they move down through the stream of water and they go past the charged rod. The result is that you see the stream of water get pulled over to the right. So in summary, a charged object will exert a force on the positive and negative parts of polar molecules. In this example, the hydrogen and the oxygen parts of the water. These forces will make the molecules rotate. And because of this rotation, there will be a net attractive force between the charged object and the molecule, just like with the piece of wood and like with the balloon on the wall. This attractive force is another example of an induced electrostatic force. Remember, induced means to make happen without directly touching it. Uh, so this induced electrostatic force is between a charged object, uh, the rod, and a neutral object or material, in this case, the water. Oh, couldn't resist this bit for you. FYI, every physicist needs the taps like these that were used in the demonstration. Check it out.
These taps you can turn on and off based on electrostatics principles as well. I know, nerd alert, but there you go. So our next piece is to take a look a little bit more closely at how we can measure and, and assess this electrostatic induction and try to determine what type of charge is there. The tool we use is called an electroscope. This is a picture of a realistic one shown here. Uh, a diagram of the same situation shown on the right. Uh, the main piece to note is that for the electroscope, the core of the electroscope, that is all down the center, is made of a conductor. And you have little foils here that are very light that can deflect and move to the left and to the right. All of this metal conductor is insulated by this plastic from the metal shell that keeps the effective wind away. In our simplified diagram on the right, this is the insulating piece right here. And you can see the metal conductors all the way through. And in our example, we have just one strip of foil rather than the two on the real equipment. And if we take a look in our diagram and count the positive and negative charges, we have two, four, six, eight, ten positives. And two, four, six, eight, we also have ten negatives. So in other words, this is a neutral electroscope as shown down here. So, can we illustrate this same principle of induction on the electroscope? So what would happen is we would bring our charged rod near the electroscope. Notice it's not touching. Um, it's a negative charge, so it should repel the electrons that were in the top of the electroscope and push those electrons down to the bottom. Please notice if we count here, we still have two, four, six, eight, ten positives and two, four, six, eight, ten negatives. We still have a neutral electroscope. But just like our other illustrations in this series, we have a induced charge down on the bottom of the electroscope and in theory the foil should move away. So let's see if this happens in action. There's the electroscope, negatively charged object brought towards it. Notice the foils down at the bottom. So one more time. Foils clearly repel, so we are inducing a charge. It's not permanent. We've just pushed the negative charges down towards the bottom of the electroscope. Now, can we permanently charge the electroscope rather than just inducing the charge? Well, to permanently charge it, we'd have to transfer the electrons right onto the electroscope, so we would have to make physical contact. And if you look at the top here, we're touching, and that means any electrons that were in the region of the uh, amber rod that were actually in physical contact with the plate, they would transfer off of the amber rod and onto the plate. So now, as you see in the diagram, we have many more negatives than positives, so the electroscope has a negative charge overall. So in reality, take a look, touch the electroscope, and now we have a permanently charged electroscope. Now how about when we take the amber rod away? The electrons that are there will now distribute themselves equally all around the electroscope. So if I just back up the video just a bit and you look closely, you'll notice just as I take the rod away, you'll see the leaves just fall down a little bit. Let's see, right there. Can you see it? So I'll do it again. So right at that point, the leaves start to fall down a little bit because the negatives that were held in the bottom before now redistribute throughout the electroscope. So there's a, few, a fewer amount or smaller amount of negative charges on the bottom of the electroscope. So a little check for understanding and exercise for yourself. How about if we have this negatively charged electroscope that you see in the diagram and we bring a positive glass rod to it? What would happen? Well, had a chance to think about it or pause the video and finish your reflection. The solution, if we have a positively charged rod, that is going to attract the negatives that are in the electroscope up towards the top because we're going to have an excess positive charge up here and that will attract the negatives. That means fewer negatives would be left down here, which means the leaf of the electroscope would fall down. Hope you got it right. 
neutralizing the, ele the electroscope, we just need to give the electricity a, a chance to follow a path to ground. So if I touch it with my finger, fairly straightforward, you can see the charge has spread out into my finger and the electroscope is now neutral, as we saw in the beginning.